Uh, I got a 93 Mazda RX-7 R1. So for the engine, uh, it's a 20B, it's a C-series, um, so it's already penned. Uh, I do have upgraded dowels and everything in it. It's large street port, uh, the rotor's been scalloped, RX parts, apex seals, and then OEM seals for everything else pretty much. So it's, pretty, it's a pretty simple, simple build with the car. It's a bullseye power S483 with the Batmobile, and then uh, the 115 exhaust housing and then just four inch all the way back. Um, it has a race muffler and then a Magnaflow, so some type of Magnaflow muffler at the rear. Just keep it somewhat quiet. So at the moment it's on 27 pounds. Uh, I'm sure it should be higher 800s, maybe 900. Uh, once it came off the dyno, it was at 24, it made 826. <laughs> The fuel system is a Aeromotive 5.0 uh, brushless pump with dash, I think 12 lines and then uh, eight or 10 return, uh, ID 2600s, and that's pretty much it. I mean, like I said, it's another, it's simple, simple stuff. Um, so it's actually a frozen boost uh, air to water system. When I first finished the car, I was having issues with uh, overheating and stuff. So I thought maybe it was a combination of the intercooler was too big that I had up front and then the radiator was a little bit too small, so I decided to go to air to water to see if it would help it out at all, and then move the intercool or the radiator forward. My ITs shoot up a little bit, like darn, like say I do like two, three pulls, they'll get a little high, um, so I do need to add a uh, heat exchanger, hopefully to see if that helps it or not. If not, then I'll probably have to go with something slightly bigger for the air to water system. So the Trans is a DCT, it's out of a uh, 20M4 F82. A buddy of mine, Neil Adderley, came up with this kit with a couple other people to um, mate the DCT to the rotary. So honestly, I'm a true manual guy. Like I love manuals, I drive a manual truck every day. So me swapping to the automatic really, uh, I was I was up and down with it. Like I went back and forth, I don't know how many times. Um, I had it in the car, took it out like two or three times, put it back in. After I got everything figured out, I finally drove it and I was just like, all right, yeah, it's, it's cool. But it's just like, I don't know what to do with my hand. Like I just, you know, honestly, I raced with my brother not too long ago, and after that race, I realized how much difference the DCT made in the car and how much it woke it up. I guess the combination, maybe the gearing and stuff, with the DCT, it just it just worked way better than the T56 I had. <laughs> Dash here, so are you running a fuel tech ECU? Yeah, I have the fuel tech FT600, and then um, they're wide band, and then just sort of standard fuel gauge. So this right here is uh, for the line lock, and then this one is for the rolling anti leg, and then obviously your paddle shifters and stuff like that. I still have to do a, a decent amount of tuning between like the transmission and all that stuff. So like when you come to a stop, sometimes you'll hear it like just kind of the idle going up and down. When I had the T56 on it, I had. Um, the regular Pro J throttle body was a 105. Throttle body is great for racing, but like for what I'm doing with the car, it was just, it's way too big. So like trying to go through town at like 25, the car's and just jumping around and whatnot. So um, I ended up switching to the Hellcat throttle body mm. and um, so obviously drive by wire now versus cable driven. So yeah, it's yeah. so much quicker and it just, just works great. Yeah. Yeah. But like I said, it's just we're in the middle of trying to get everything synced up 100% together so everything works 100%. This reminds me of uh, when I was when I hopped in a Calvo Viper. It was only making a thousand. 
the, like the, the how the power band, like how it stays in the power, just keeps going and going. It feels just like that. So what's crazy is I've had a couple offers for this car for obviously this buy it, and uh, if I was to sell it, I'd probably go with a Gen 5 Viper. Like that's my next car to buy outside of like a Porsche 911 or something of that nature. Hell yeah. So, Hell Turbo Smart came out with their electronic one, mm -hmm. which I would love to switch to. not too many DCT rotaries out there I want to say I think there's there's Sean which helped me out a lot with mine and then a uh, guy Sanjay he's over in I want to say Canada somewhere in that general area so there's only a handful of us out running right now but there's a lot of them that are should be hopefully coming up in the next couple of months I could shift decent but with the way this shifts it's just it doesn't compare I mean there's always that argument of auto versus manual and I'm like I said I'm always a manual guy but the way this thing drives and shifts it's just you can't beat it stays in boost the whole way through. I wasn't, with the T56, I was hitting like full boost around 54, 5500, and now it's, it seems like it's coming on around the 4,000 somewhere range. So it picked up, it seemed to pick up a lot. Definitely worked the car up a lot. I'm happy with it. Mark Williams drive shaft. For the rear, it's just a Cobra 88. 14 gears, uh, carbon clutches and stuff in the rear and then drive shaft pro level axles. So with the 410s right now, I feel like it doesn't go through it super quick but i mean i mean it's a seven speed so the gearing versus a manual is you know it's a lot different so it does go through slightly faster but it also being it's a seven speed you have a lot more gear so it kind of makes sense i guess more so the 410s seem to be 
good on the street at the moment. I haven't been to the track yet to actually, you know, do any type of testing. So I'm gonna see how they do on the track, see if it gets me where I wanna be. If not, then I might go technically, I guess, down into gearing, maybe like a 390, 380 something, just to see how it, how it does. Honestly, I really wanted the car to be set up for half mile stuff. So I'm gonna just play around, you know, and see what, uh, see where it gets me, if it gets me to the range that I wanna be. So I originally set up to build a car for a half mile. I would love to hit 200 and a half mile and see if it can make it there, but uh, you know, just trial and error at this point. So with a 13B, um, it was a or half bridge, uh, Borg Warner S475, just super common setup, leaving the light, like I almost stalled actually leaving the, the light, uh, went 11 something at like 117. So that was after that, that was like, that's all I've ever pushed a car to. Other than that, it's always been a street car because that's, that's what I set up to be is more so a street car, fun car, I can just get in it, drive wherever I want. Suspension is honestly, it's pretty stock, just upgraded bushings, or uh, just new bushings and stuff. The front has Megan coilovers, the rear has Penske's. It got some Megan trailing arms, tow arms. It's got the CCW classics, uh, the race versions, 17 by eight and a half in the front and 17 by 11 and a half in the rear. 245 Kumho Exa on the front v V720s. And then the rear is just R888, 315, 35 in the rear. So the interior is honestly pretty stock besides the seats. Uh, they're Kevmans, the carbon fiber bucket seats. Other than that, I mean, besides a little cute DCT shifter and the paddle shifters, everything else is pretty stock inside of it. There was a cage in the car at one point, so that's why the dash was cut. It didn't fit anywhere how I liked it. And then the seats and stuff, I was super limited with the seats and stuff that I wanted. So I ended up cutting it out. And now I just have those, you know, horrible holes in there. So pretty much, um, what I do with motors and stuff, uh, I work with Jim at JPR. Uh, most of the time, if I have like my cars or a customer car comes in, I'll uh, disassemble it, look at everything over, clean it up as much as I can, and then drop it off to him, let him do the porting, and then the final assembly. And then I'll come back, do all the fabrication stuff that's needed, or outsource it to you know some of my buddies that I know. And then uh, as far as tuning-wise on this car, um, Danny Perez at uh, Perez Racing, they're up in Philly. Uh, they're the ones that tuned it for me. And then um, as far as the tuning for the transmission goes, it's done by Bartek. Um, he's the owner of HTG, uh, GCU controllers. So that's what controls the transmission and everything. He's based, I wanna say in Poland. So he pretty much remoted in and then we just did a couple pulls back and forth on the road. Probably took on 30, 40 minutes or so and the car was running like, extremely good. The trans itself, it shifts extremely quick, but I've noticed after racing a couple races and stuff that it can be shifting a little bit quicker. So. Um, We'll probably end up remoting back in and then do some more testing and see if we can, you know, get it dialed in. So for the exterior wise, I always had, before I had RX-7, I always seen them, looked at them. And then the 99, so the front end right now is a 99. And it was just always my front, my, one of my favorite front bumpers. There's a lot of them out there that look good. Uh, the car was originally red. I was up in there for a solid two years trying to figure out if I wanted to keep it red or go white. Cause FD, uh, white FD is like my, that was my dream car actually. So I was like, ah, maybe I'll go white. And then my daughter was born. Her favorite color was purple. So I was looking at like a black cherry purple and um, the guy I had actually mixed up the paint gave me this color. And um, I went to her, I was like, you like this? And she said, like, yeah. So that's what it came out to be. The hood is a scoot hood, which I mean, kind of resembles like the Viper hood pretty much. As far as everything else, the side skirts are pretty much like a 99 uh, replica but it's a single piece versus the two piece that they are from OEM. And then uh, for the rear, they're Volkswagen, like old Volkswagen Beetle arches that I just chopped up a little bit and ended up welding onto like the body and then just had my body guy mold everything up and that's how it came out. I don't really have a goal for it. I'm just winging it, honestly. Uh, I mean, next thing up is the car needs a cage for how fast it's going. Safety is, I mean, having a kid, I gotta, you know, make sure I'm around for that. Shoot, I have a whole line of friends that have just been there to help me through the whole thing. From my family, my uh, brother, Patrick Gwynn, my dad, Patrick Gwynn. I've almost sold the car, I don't know how many times, but they've been in my ear, you know, saying, you ain't selling nothing. I'm in a group called Hotel 7. Uh, a lot of people that have seen the car, there's always been a front plate that said Hotel 7 on the front of it. Uh, it's a group that I'm in with a bunch of RX-7 guys from around the world. They've helped me out tremendously with the car. Just random information stuff that I couldn't figure out or just random stuff, you know. Danny, uh, Jim at JPR, um, Joe Perez, which is Danny's dad, He's uh, also helped tune the car. I'm sure I'm missing people, but off the top of my head, those are the people that have really uh, helped me out the most with it.